Welcome to a Git tutorial video where I'm going to talk about Git push. My name is Dan and let's get started. So just want to show you a, a quick little setup I have here. I actually have two terminals. Uh, one is in this left tab where I am the user Dan on my machine which is called Willow. Uh, but I also have another terminal where I have SSH to another machine on my network and I am the user Dan on that machine which is called Dan Netbook. So um, I'm showing you this because I want to I want to show you um, how you can use git push to share commits uh, across a network. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna do is uh, create a bare repo and we're gonna do that in this little made up uh, with this made up repo I have here called fun it just has three files in it there's nothing really in it that's just for demonstration purposes but you know this is where your source code would be so uh, the way you can create a bear repo is when you clone it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna clone a bear repo and put it alongside this existing fun directory and so the way you do that is you type dash dash bear on your git clone command and then the path to the repo you want to clone hit enter and it says cloning into bear repository fun.git so now if I do a long listing here you'll see that in addition to the fun git repo we had before we now have fun.git and the dot git when you see that is a huge clue that it's probably a bear repo and so what I mean by bear if we cd into this directory and do a long listing of files you'll notice that there are no files from the working tree so just a reminder if I go into my non bear repo fun I do ls I see three files but if I go into the bear repo I don't see those files bar duck and foo that I created these are files in my working tree what we see instead is what looks like the content under the dot git folder of your non bear repo which is the git internal stuff this is stuff that you never actually edit directly this is where it stores the objects for your commits and a bunch of refs and you can put hooks in here etc the, the git config itself is here but what I'm pointing out is that a bare repo by definition does not have a working tree and if you're new to git you might think well who cares um, but the reason I'm pointing this out is because bare repos can always be pushed to which is not true for non bear repos so that's why we've created a bear repo because we're about to use this repo as a remote to push commits back and forth between two machines and so the first thing in order to be able to do that is I'm gonna go into my original non bear fun repo and I'm gonna add this bear repo as a remote and so get remote add I'm just gonna call it bear we can call it whatever we want um, and then get the path so, Dan, Dan fun.git and I hit enter and now if I do git remote you'll notice that I have a new remote called bear and by doing this by creating a remote I th this is the first step to be able to push and pull from it so if you if you're not familiar with the git remote command I encourage you to watch some of my previous videos where I talk about it but basically this is setting up the URL information for uh, adding another remote which is just telling git hey there's another repo that I may want to interact with I called that bear and that, that's all we just did right there um, so now I can do things like git fetch bear and it's not gonna um, well so yeah it updates these uh, uh, these refs but it didn't really pull in any new information because we just cloned it from this one so they're identical repos so um, what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to the other machine and then clone from this bare repo. 
So let's do that and switching tabs. Now I'm Dan at Dan Netbook. And uh, let's see, what's my working directory? I'm just in my home directory here. I'm going to make a directory called dev. Oops, I'm sorry. Dev already exists. CD into a dev, and then I'm going to git clone. And then I'm going to give it the URL to the repo that I want, which is the bare one, which is on the other machine. So I'm going to give it the syntax um, for SSH. And the path is home, dev, dan. Oops, crackles. And dev, fun dot git. All right. Hit enter. And it's going to clone on that machine a new repo that came from the bare one we just created. And since we cloned it from the bare one, its origin is going to be the bare repo. That's where origin comes from. It's just origin is the remote that this current repo came from so what i mean by that is now if you look we have a fun directory this is a non-bear repo we cloned from a bear repo but we didn't give it the dash dash bear option so the one we got is not bear it's a normal repo meaning it has working files and like i was saying before if, if you do get remote show origin uh, this actually goes over the SSH tunnel, which is why it's pausing for a second here. But I just wanted to point out that this repo on Dan Netbook's origin is the bare repo. Oh, come on, take my password. Yeah, so here it is. It's just showing, hey, this is my origin on Willow, this path. So next, we're going to actually, you've probably, if you're, if you've used Git, you're probably familiar with, uh, fetching and merging from a remote. And we're going to go over Git push, which, and you can think of Git push as the opposite of a fetch. And if you'll recall, a Git fetch is, you can think of it like a download. So a Git push is kind of like an upload. And I just wanted to point out real quick, um, if you look at the Git, the Git man pages, in my opinion, could use some work, especially for, I mean, it's written in a language that makes sense if you're a Git expert, but if you're new to it, it's not helpful. For example, well, what does Git push do? It updates the remote refs along with associated objects. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. I have no idea what that means. So, a little more detail. Updates remote refs using local refs while sending some, while sending objects necessary to complete the given refs. Oh, that makes, that makes even more sense. Okay. I'm done being sarcastic now. But my point is that, um, this stuff can be a little hard to learn. So basically you can think of a git push as the opposite of a git fetch. So if you remember up here, we did a git fetch to download information from our remotes. Um, and that's what happened here. Well, a git push is the opposite. It's you uploading information. To the remotes. Um, so we're going to do that right now. We're going to create a commit. Let's see what branch we're on here. We're on the master branch. Uh, if I do get status, you'll notice everything's clean. So let's just touch a file here. Save the file. The status shows it's changed. We add it to the index. We do a quick commit message. Bar. Okay, so we just created a commit. You see it at the top. This is our new commit. So if we want to share this information, we can push it to a repo. And in this case, we're going to push it to the bear repo. Um, and in this scenario, the bear repo is on the same machine because we created it one level up alongside. Um, but I wanted to point out here that this bear repo could be anywhere that Git could could get to, basically. So if it's it's any remote URL. So it happens to be on this machine, but that's just because we made it that way. It could be anywhere, and that's what I that's what I wanted to point out. So we're in the fun repo. This is our working path. We just created a commit on oops on the master branch, and we're gonna push that information to uh, the bare remote, get remote, 
show there, which, if you recall, is right alongside. And so the way you do that is real simple. And this is this is the verbose syntax of git push, which I like teaching people uh, because git has a lot of assumed behavior. So basically what you do is you type git push, and then you type the name of the remote that you want to push to. Um, so in this case, we want to push to the bear remote. And then the explicit syntax here is, for this last argument, the local branch you have that you want to push refs from to the branch you want to push refs to on the remote. So if we wanted to push our local master branch to the bare repos master branch, this is how you would uh, have the syntax. And so, you know, uh, let's just go ahead and hit enter. And you'll notice right away that we get a message that kind of looks like a message you get when you get fetch. And basically it just said, I successfully uploaded these refs from my master to uh, master on the bare repo, which is alongside. So if we just CD over real quick and look in that bare repo and do a git log, you'll notice, hey, there's that commit. We successfully pushed it to the bare repo. So if we switch terminals back over to Dan Netbook, remember we have this fun repo that we cloned from the bare repo. It's already set up as its origin remote. So um, we can do a git fetch and we should pull down the change that was just pushed to that remote. By pull down, I mean download. Sometimes I say pull when I don't mean it, which is a little confusing because in git pull is a command that means a very specific thing. Password. Okay, you got to get fetch. So if I do get status in this repo, you'll see that it's clean. We didn't do any changes. Our fetch has now told us that we are behind origin master by one commit. That's the commit we just made, and we could merge with that if we want to. Let's go ahead and this, I want to show you this key thing for git push, which is if I made, let's say this is another uh, repo. I'm doing some development on this machine that's different than the development I did before. Um, so let's just go touch another file and create a commit. So zoom through this pretty quick. Git status shows that we made a change. Get add it to the index, get commit, and message changed duck file. Okay, and now if we do get status, you'll notice the message that our branch and origin master have diverged. We created a commit, they created a commit. Now what I want to show you is if you try to push to a remote that has newer refs, what happens if you just try to push your work before merging with that remote? So if I just try to get push, the name of the remote is origin because I cloned it from the bear. So I don't have a separate uh, remote for that. Get push origin and then my local branch to what I want to push to. So I want to say my local master, I want to push it to the master in origin. Now, if you've been following closely, you may wonder what's going to happen here, right? Because master has a commit that we just pushed from this other terminal, right? And it's this commit, added info to bar. But over here, we just created another commit where we touched duck. So if we push our master to that master, what's going to happen? Is it is it going to merge? Is it going to overwrite? Well, the answer is it's not going to let you. And this is by design. So once this connects, I give it my password. It's going to reject the attempted push. If I can type my password correctly, that would just be super. There we go. This is what I wanted to show you. So it attempted to push to origin. And it says rejected, non-fast forward. And this is Git telling you, in a way Git does so eloquently, that you can't push because 
your changes are non fast forward with the remote and that's fancy speak for you need to pull before you push aka you need to merge with the latest state of origins master before you can push and that makes sense right we have to merge our changes with the latest state before we can push content on top of it and so the way you do that is just get merge origin master and there's a merge commit which is already filled out for us. Just write it and exit. And you'll notice a merge commit was made and that means that we are up to date with Origin Master. And now if we try to push, it's going to let us. And so, I, I don't know if you'll grasp all this if you're new to Git and what, what the implications of this are. Uh, but basically, I just wanted to show you that, okay, there you go, the push went through successfully, is that if you're using a, a remote to push information, that if you're pushing to the same branch that other people are pushing to, you will probably have to merge, well, not probably, you will have to merge with their content before you can push your content on top of it. And... I think that's all that I wanted to cover for the most part in this video. This is just an introduction to Git push. Uh, you, you may have plenty of questions now about, well, why, why would I Git push? You know, I have two, two tabs here, two working spaces on two different machines. I can obviously SSH to them. Why don't I just pull one to the other, um, when I want to, when I want to share commits between these machines and that's a perfectly reasonable approach but um, what I want to point out is that this bare repo concept by set like in this example we have two repos on two machines what if we had 10 repos on 10 machines and you need to share content between nine other remotes are you gonna uh, set them all up as remotes and pull from them well maybe if your workflow is conducive to that but sometimes it's convenient to set up a centralized bare repository in which many many people can all push and pull from um, so it really depends on your workflow but I just uh, wanted to point that out so I think I'm gonna wrap it up for this video um, just to remind you um, the syntax for git push is git push then uh, remote the name of the remote you have that you want to push to local branch colon remote branch to push your changes to so hope that's helpful my name's dan and i'll see you next time